Michael, thank you so much for joining us. How are you, brother? Excellent. Good to see you, Pete. And nice to talk to an Aussie down under. It's always, I love, I love talking to Aussies. I feel there's like a weird hindered spirit between um, the sort of ex colonies in the Southern hemisphere. There's a t totally different energy and a vibe between people that live in the Southern hemisphere and people that live in the Northern hemisphere. I don't know what it is, but it's definitely there and it's tangible. You could do a book on that, what a, a, new, a new investigation. And I, I do want to thank you because I know you're a busy man and this is a true gift to be able to spend a little bit of time with you and for our viewers and listeners, I think they're going to get a lot out of this. And you are an expert or you've spent a lot of time researching our ancient past. And... I can't, I've, I've been diving in, my wife and I have been diving into so many documentaries recently and TV series about ancient civilizations. And the more, I'm, the more I watch or the more we watch, the more I am certain, and it's, it's not, a, it's not, there's no doubt there, but I am certain that we have the solutions for what we're experiencing now, our disconnection, from what we can learn from our ancient civilizations as far as solutions go. And I'd love to talk to you about solutions for 2021 and onwards, because my, inter my perception is that we are so disconnected from all the major elements of life that can fulfill us for long-term sustainable and regenerative health. So I just want to hand it over to you with that, with that premise, my friend, and uh, for you to take us on the journey from ancient into now, into the future and what is possible. Yeah, thanks, Pete. Um, it's definitely uh, true what you said, um, how you opened this discussion up. I feel exactly the same way. I feel I have learned so much about the world, who we are as humanity, about nature around us from studying the past and also even the cosmos, the, the universe, the cosmos and, and the nature around us. Um, it, it sounds really crazy, but the more I study the past and discover um, mysterious tools, artifacts, ancient ruins and delve into the ancient civilizations that are, that are completely vanished and gone, um, I find I'm, I'm, I'm making discoveries that I never expected I would make 20 years ago. And that is for me the, the greatest uh, pleasure and gift and a surprise at the same time. Um, what, what I've learned from uncovering and finding the vanished civilizations of Southern Africa, and I'll stick to that, to that subject here first, because there's obviously ancient civilizations all over the world. Australia has got its own incredible ancient history that that people don't know about and very few people are even prepared to talk about. Uh, and the whole world, no matter which country or which continent you go to, there are hidden ruins, hidden ancient civilizations that have completely vanished. And we see that in the constant discoveries that go on. Isn't that the incredible thing that or every day, every week, every year, we find more and more discoveries of ancient civilizations. When is that going to end? You know, really? Is it, surely we should have discovered everything by now. We think we're so smart. We think we're the pinnacle of civilization. We're, we're living now. This is it. Because we're living now, we must be smarter than people in the past because they must have been stupid cavemen living in caves and just somehow surviving and, and killing each other, who knows what. But different people have different opinions about the past and past civilizations, especially when you go sort of beyond the Greeks, beyond the Sumerians, and then, and then what? Prior to the Sumerians, what was there? Just chaos and people living in caves. I'm not quite sure how the, the average population perceives that, but when you go beyond that, when you go beyond the Sumerians and you start to really look at the, the incredible structures and the ruins that have been left behind that, that date back to 30,000 years and 100,000 years and beyond. And you start recognizing the technology that those civilizations had, everything changes. Now, I've been fortunate here, right here in South Africa to have stumbled upon what I guess one could call the, 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 the potluck of, of um, ancient civilizations. This is like the, the largest concentration of ancient ruins found anywhere on earth that 
has been lying under our feet. We've known about it for, for at least 500 years when the Portuguese first came past the Cape of Good Hope on their way to India. They already wrote about these ancient ruins in their journals. And so we've known about these ancient ruins here. We've known about the fact that the, the African tribes that lived here um, told the Portuguese you know, sailors that they didn't build these structures, they just occupy them and they didn't know who built them. So already there's, there's a deeper mystery there. And yet our archeologists and our historians ignore those facts. So when I, when I stumbled upon this, this incredible information in 2005, that completely blew my mind. And I started to look at, the, at the, the number of ancient ruins that we have. And that's when things start to get really interesting because by 1891, a British archeologist, Theodore Bent, who spent a lot of about two years in South Africa, Botswana and Zimbabwe in those days, he studied, he was also the first guy to truly explore Great Zimbabwe and find the, the Zimbabwe birds and many of the important artifacts. He himself claimed that there is a, a gold mining or layers of evidence of a gold mining civilization at Great Zimbabwe that can be, that he can trace back at least 2000 years. Now, this is in his book that he published in, 18, in, in the late 1800s. So, and all this information is completely ignored. So this, you know, we've had this information, but you've got to go and find it in its original source that is now more than 100 years old. And slowly but surely, unless we go pull it out and revisit it and bring it back into our current consciousness and then deal with it and not just discard it, um, that information would have just been, been lost. So Theodore Bent traveled on horseback and horse wagon through Southern Africa. And in those days, he, he made sketches and he wrote about these ancient ruins, these stone circle structures that I've that I've sort of explored uh, to, to a much greater extent. And in, the, in those days, he already estimated that there were about 4,000 of these ruins scattered throughout South Africa, 4,000. So I thought, and keep in mind, I discovered this um, in some of the writing, probably or, already early in my, fr from when I was 19 through my thirties, but it, the penny really dropped for me when I was writing Slave Species of God in 2004, 2005. Uh, when I was really delving into that research, because then I found the research papers on this, and there wasn't much information other than the books from 100 years ago, and then from the 60s and 70s, but there was not much information in there. Very few visuals, very few photographs of what they were referring to, and they weren't quality. Then by 1976, Roger Summers published a, a, a nice detailed book about the Portuguese and their journey, and a lot of a few critical points in those in that book. Um, and he then uh, estimates about 20,000 of the ruins in Southern Africa, 20,000 of these stone circles. So that blew my mind. I thought 20,000, that's, that's a lot of ruins. You know, that's, that's like living in the land of Indiana Jones. So I got very excited. And then shortly after I released my, my sort of first book that became, you know, quite a, a hot seller on Amazon at the, at the time, uh, I met a guy called Jan Heiner, who, who showed me the first aerial photographs of these stone circle ruins. And that, I mean, you can just imagine, I've never seen anything like this. No one in the world had seen those photographs before. And here I am privy to seeing these aerial photographs that Johan had been taken for at least 15 years prior to that. He was sharing that with all the archeologists, all the academia, all the universities, all the historians in South Africa, no one was interested. They were all just bobbing it off. Oh, these, we know about these. Yeah, we studied them, we know them well. It's that kind of arrogant, dismissive attitude that unfortunately permeates the halls of academia, which is so sad. Uh, but that's the reality that we face. 